Hi there. Do you want to see how you can use the new dialogue system? Yes. Great. Here we go. I added new dialogue system to Spock and in this video I'm going to show how you can use it. So let's recreate that dialogue that I showed in the beginning of the video. I'm going to go to a script machine and here I'll add a node on start and for the dialogues to work correctly we're going to enable coroutine for this event. To display the first text let's add a unit and the short way of adding the units is using the first letters of the node and the dialogue system starts with a dialogue system so ds and then a unit that we want to use is a write text. So DSWT will give you the unit that you're looking for. In this unit or subgraph, we have the option of passing the name that we want to display, text that we want to display, and also if we want this unit to wait for a click for the done to be triggered. Now you can turn off the wait for click here and use your own or you can use the one that I have here, DSC, so dialog system click and all it's going to be doing is waiting for a mouse click to continue. By turning it on here, that is the same process. So for name, let's pass in smart penguins and for text, let's just say hi there. That is our first text. For this next dialog to show up, we are listening for the click. After we get the click, we can display our, our next dialog. Let's just control D and duplicate this message. We're still gonna use the same name, but for text, I'm gonna put, do you want to see how you can use the new dialog system? And for this one, I'm gonna disable wait for click. And the reason for that is as soon as it types out this text, to the screen, I want it to display the options without waiting for a click. The way we can display the options or interactions for the user is by using the sequence. It's just a cleaner way of displaying it. So to add an option, we can do DSAO. The unit is called Dialog System Add Option. Here we can display the text here. So you can say yes. And if you want to use color, you can use the standard text decorators to do that. So let's say green for our color for yes. We can add another option here. So yes, AO. And for now, we'll use color red. So that's our two options. You can actually daisy chain them if you want. So uh, right here, after edit, connect it in a daisy chain without using the sequence but I like using sequence because it makes the graph look cleaner. And if we start branching out from here, the graph is gonna get even messier with all these daisy chains. This will display the two options or interactions that we allow for the player to click. So either yes or no. And if one of them gets clicked on that option, the triggered flow will be triggered and uh, you can do whatever you want here. If no one gets triggered, we can add a dialogue write text and let's use smart penguin. And for text, uh, we're just gonna say goodbye. Then if we get a click again, uh, what we can do is hide the dialogue. So DS hide and that uh, will hide the dialogue from being displayed. If we click yes, we can do something different. So let's actually change our background to my second background and just activate the background game object that I have. And after that, we can write uh, another text here and I'll just say, great, here we go. And after that, we can also hide the dialogue if we receive a click. Uh, that is how I've created uh, that dialogue. And uh, let's go and try it out and see if it works. Okay, starts and we get hi there. Uh, do you want to see how you can use new dialogue system? We, we, we click a yes, it's going to change the background and uh, we get the, great, here we go. And if we restart and try the no option now, hi there. And by the way, if you click 
when it's typing out, it will automatically finish that text. And if we click no now, goodbye, and click in, it just turns off that dialog. So that's how you write a dialog. And now let's take a look at how it's set up and what other units we have available. All the units that I added with the dialog system, and it is a dialog system brain. I'll show in a bit of where this is used, but this is how the actual dialog box is configured with the text and the name. And then we have the dialog system options brain, and that's the list of options that you create. And for each option, there's also a brain. These three nodes are for configuring the dialog. I have a sample how it's set up and I'll show it in a little bit. You can actually use that as a starting point and modify how you want it to look. The other nodes here, so here's the dialog system at option and system write text. So those are the two that I've showed how to use there. And then you have the dialog system hide and dialog system show. And that will hide the text box and also the name box from the dialog system. If the options are inside of the text box, then the options will be hidden as well. And the other one that I have here is dialog system click. And that is used if you want to wait for a click. Uh, so these are the eight new nodes that I've added with dialog system. Now let's go and I'm going to walk through how it's set up. So in here, if you go to Spock game templates, I have created a new folder, dialog system, and this is the scene that you see here. And in here, I have the dialog prefab. You can drag it into your canvas and use it. And if we go and look at the prefab, the dialog game object has those variables configured, and you can look where those are connected. And I have an embedded script here. So if you want to convert it to a graph, you can do that. But here are those variables and they're used to configure the dialog system brain. So they're just connecting to the name box, to the text box, name text mesh pro, so where the name should be written and also text uh, where the text should be written. And here I also have the system options brain. I have the option box variable connected here for the option box and the maximum amount of options that are available. So currently you can see that the options, um, I have four duplicates of the options. So if I enable them, you can see all those four options. If you want to add more options, you can just duplicate those. And that is how it's working right now. Each option has a brain box assigned to it as well. And the only thing that the dialect system option brain and needs is the text that it needs to modify. So. That's why I just passed that text inside uh, there and also embedded script. So that is how it's configured. And again, uh, you can use this as a starting point. And I guess this is an addition to the Spock package. So if you have purchased it already, the update will be out live with this video.